Does anybody else remember a time when when finding a good a good makeup dupe was like icing and cherries and whipped cream on top of good cake? Because like when you found a really good dupe and you shared about it, like you just you felt so good. But now it's like dupes are floating around everywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. As you guys saw, like, do you guys, do you guys remember, like, the, the good feeling that you used to get when you would find, like, a really good dupe? And it used to be super hard to find dupes, like, in the makeup space because... It was really hard for brands to be able to dupe them, like dupe other brands. And like now, now we find that there are so many like dupes out there. Some of them claiming to be like 100% a legit dupe. And then other times like it's, it's not a good dupe, but people think it's a good dupe. It's another unfiltered makeup opinions video. <laughs> Slash like getting ready with me video because I am getting ready for the day, but I really wanted to talk about dupe culture because um, actually this video is stemming off of how Charlotte Tilbury actually called out Elf for like legitimately trying to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury product. And that was like a whole, it was a whole marketing gimmick. Um, Kelly Gooch has a really good video on like that whole subject. That's not what this video is about. This video is literally about how dupe culture has kind of taken over the entire beauty space. And um, as like a part two to that, kind of how I feel that like, because dupe culture has taken over and everybody's trying to dupe everybody else, I really don't find that we have a lot of revolutionary makeup product on the market right now. And if you agree with that statement, <laughs> hit the like button if you if you totally agree with that. But that's that's what this video is about today. So before we get into the conversation, my name is Stacy. I feature unfiltered makeup opinions and honest reviews. If that's your kind of jam, definitely hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave me a comment down below about like dupe culture. Point number one that I do want to make is that I'm not opposed to a really good dupe. I love finding like a spot for spot dupe for makeup. Like that does not bother me at all. Like finding a really good makeup dupe, but when it's like legitly good. So what I mean by that is when the formula is pretty much the same, the color, like if you're looking for like a specific shade of like lipstick or, you know, lip liner or blush or something like that. And like the, the formula performs really, really similarly or the same. And the color is really similar or the same. And it could like pass for one or the other. I love really good dupes like that. I'm not opposed to a really good dupe. I'm not. So that's point number one. But point number two is one thing that I am opposed to is when every brand under the sun is trying to dupe the same exact product and we're getting an oversaturation of that same product and the dupes do not meet the, the criteria of like it's a spot for spot shade dupe, it's a formulation dupe or anything like that. Like, And then kind of also co coinciding with that is that like I am... I am opposed to dupes taking over the makeup market and we don't see anything new or revolutionary coming out from any brand. They're just coming out with the same product from different brands. While I understand that like some people can like a formulation better than others, they like a brand better than others, so it gives them a lot more variety. It also has oversaturated the makeup market to the point where as a consumer, we're a little bit overwhelmed with like what is available to us just like for makeup product in general, but we're also overwhelmed with like all of the the dupes that, that are available as well. So I just used the Pro Base Banana Blurring Primer from Makeup Academy. I love this stuff. It's like a lotion and it's very like tacky feeling. And today we're going in with the L'Oreal Infallible 32 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. This is actually um, a reformulated release of the 24 Hour Fresh Wear. And I've been doing like, a, this is actually gonna be day number three of, of wearing this foundation so, so go check out the foundation wear test if it's up on my channel um i will try linking it in the eye for you guys i think the big thing with dupe culture and this is what my unfiltered makeup opinion is about is that <laughs> this is this is my statement my my hypothesis my my thesis statement of my essay <laughs> 
dupe culture has taken over the beauty space to a point where it feels like all the beauty space is focusing on right now is duping each other. And they're not coming out with anything super revolutionary. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, there actually was a like a, a marketing gimmick where Charlotte Tilbury was releasing some new product. So it was actually all over the internet that like she is sending empty PR boxes and everybody was like saying it probably was a marketing gimmick, but she was actually calling out like all the people who were trying to dupe her product and like she didn't want to release it beforehand because she didn't want it to be duped again um, by different brands. And a prime example of like somebody taking the viral Charlotte Tilbury product. Um, <laughs> I have a video all about like makeup puffs in general, which we're going to be using some today. So like these little puffs right here, this one's from e.l.f. I have one from Flower Beauty. And I have a whole video on that, which I will also try to link in the eye when I reviewed the, the e.l.f. puffs, these ones. And like um, Anjelica Nikvist has kind of talked a little bit about it, especially when it came to like this product in particular. They were trying to dupe, brands were trying to dupe, and multiple brands, not just one, multiple brands were trying to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury highlight wands, blush wands, and the contouring wands. And some brands have done it really, really well, and some brands have not duped it really, really well. But we have multiple brands that have tried like their own rendition of it. And um, I will be mentioning that a little bit more as we get into this video. So brands are constantly duping each other now. And we are finding that there is a lot of makeup product on the market. And like I said, I feel like it's just an, an oversaturation of just a whole bunch of makeup dupes. I remember a time in the beauty space when finding, like, when beauty gurus, myself included, would go out into the world. And this is back in, like, 2016, 2017, 2018. Um before certain things were happening in the beauty space before COVID, I should say. Um, but we would go out into the world and we would make very targeted specific dupe videos. And we would, we would find like legit formula for formula, shade for shade, like legit dupes. And most of the time, other larger beauty gurus who found like, you know, other beauty gurus who were trying to test these out, it became a thing where it wasn't very common to do a duped video. Like on my channel, I do them like maybe once or twice a year or a little bit more than that. But it became a little bit more common for people to be like, okay, this product is said to be the viral dupe of this product, but it wasn't like there was like a million like this product is meant to be a dupe for this product. There wasn't a lot of variety out there. It was just like, okay, this one has been said to be a dupe and there wasn't like an alternative for it. And most of the time, those duped videos ended up being very, very similar to the actual duped product. Um, a prime example would be like, Rach Loves used to do videos like this where she would literally split her face in half. And I've done this too. Rach Loves would do one side of her face as high-end and then the other side of her face as drugstore. And then she would let her, her husband, Chris, and like her family members be like, oh, like that's the dupe. that That's the dupe side, like the drugstore side. And then that is the, that's the high-end side. And it used to be just drugstores duping the higher end because, you know, drugstores are able to do a very similar formulation for a lot less of a price than some of these luxury brands and it was literally just a video showing that like when you're when you're paying for luxury makeup sometimes it's just you're paying for the brand and a lot of people have said this over the years that like sometimes what you're paying for is the the name behind the brand you're not actually like the product is very similar to like other product that's on the market and basically these duped videos were all just like completely focused on finding drugstore dupes for that high-end product. Now it's gotten to the point where not only is drugstore duping the luxury brands, but high-end is trying to dupe the luxury and high-end brands as well. So they're kind of like just all duping each other and it's become this like race to see who can create the best dupe out of all of, all of the makeup brands that we have available out here. So the beauty industry has really, really just become very oversaturated with this kind of thinking where we all need to dupe each other. And I feel like it's definitely impacted every every aspect of makeup in the makeup community right now. 
there's a reason why I think all of a sudden not only is drugstore hopping on the bandwagon, but lug like luxury and other higher end brands are jumping on the bandwagon trying to dupe each other. When 2020 came around, a lot of people were at home. A lot of people were flocking to short form content. A lot of people in like if you were interested in beauty, you could go to TikTok and you could literally just take in the beauty content. And at the I feel like I personally feel like this is my part of my opinion is that the beauty the beauty brands caught on that like people were looking for dupes and were like, okay, we could dupe this, we could dupe that. And it became a thing. So they saw that like on TikTok, the highlight blush and contour wands from Charlotte Tilbury were becoming a huge thing. And at the time when those came out, because those have been out for a while, um, nobody knew how to like nobody could dupe it. Um, nobody was actually duping it. And I think when they became more TikTok viral, it was when brands became more aware of the fact that like this is a product that is very viral. We need to try duping it. So that became a huge thing for beauty brands was just duping product in general. So I have put some things on my face today that are quote unquote dupes for other high-end products. Um, one of them I have in my hand right now is the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter. And this is actually, um, this is a really good dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Wand. I think it like the, the packaging is 100% spot on. The I've never tried the formula, but I've seen reviews and people have said that this is a really good dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury highlight. So because people were wanting more content, they were wanting to find more dupes, the beauty space caught on to all of that and the beauty space started evolving and not only every single beauty brand wanted to be TikTok viral. Every single beauty brand started duping each other. They started duping each other. So a good example of this is like Rare Beauty blushes. These became super popular. I don't even remember. Like Rare Beauty, I think, launched in like 2019. I want to say it was right before COVID, 2018, 2019. I want to say is when Rare Beauty launched. It's the brand by Selena Gomez. And it was actually with, I believe, her her blush was like one of the main releases when she released it. We haven't seen a lot of people trying to dupe that one in particular. Like Juvia's Place has a really beautiful cream blush and it's actually more pigmented than this. But recently we saw Elf come out with, you know, their own version, which I just put on my face, of the, literally, of the Rare Beauty blushes. Yes, the packaging is different, but the color is pretty, pretty spot on and the formulation is pretty spot on. So we, we saw an uptick in that. Um, we saw an uptick in Charlotte Tilbury and all of her glow wands. So I have here just a couple examples of different puffs that are trying to mimic the Charlotte Tilbury glow wands, highlight wands, and blush wands. So I have a couple from e.l.f. and then I also have the Flower Beauty one that I put on. And then, you know, Makeup Revolution was known as the only brand who was, like, duping everybody, but the quality wasn't there. Everybody was like, oh, like... You know, Makeup Revolution is okay. They would have hits, they would have misses, but like overall, it was just a it's just a brand that honestly started out as being like the brand to dupe people, but they were being buzzed about, they were being talked about, and sometimes their sometimes their releases would be just as good as the high-end release or better because the price point was there. So another awesome example would be these. This is the baked highlighter from Rare Beauty. This is this went super viral, and now Makeup Revolution has their own version of the Beam Light highlighters. And they, I actually have two of the Makeup Revolution ones, and I have one of the Rare Beauty one because I love the Rare Beauty. But that's a that's a prime example of it. But so Makeup Revolution was actually a brand that was around before the whole duping boom, and they were legitly the only brand that was duping people at the time. I do not remember like a lot of other brands intentionally, intentionally duping another, another brand. And that's the, that's where things started to, to evolve during COVID was that brands after COVID started intentionally duping each other. When we would find that really good dupe from a makeup brand, it was not like an intentional dupe. It was like a somebody stumbled upon this discovery and discovered that like this is a really similar formula or like very, very, very similar. It wasn't one of those intentional dupes. And that's what the beauty space was like before the dupe 
the dupe boom that, that we're seeing now. Before the dupe boom of like 2020, a lot of brands were not duping each other intentionally. In my opinion, it was a makeup space where people were being a lot more creative. Brands were being a lot more creative, a lot more thoughtful to the consumer, and they were being more innovative in their own brand and coming out with really great product. And then along came Makeup Revolution, and they deliberately would dupe people. And as that got more popular, it got mimicked by other brands. And then obviously TikTok has had like a huge, huge influence on the beauty space because people want quick, easy content. And they also want to be able to find like really good affordable dupes and they want it to go viral on TikTok. I think TikTok has really like influenced the beauty space so terribly much over the past, we're in 2024. So over the past four years, I really feel like TikTok has influenced the beauty space quite a bit because people want, brands want to go viral on TikTok because TikTok's algorithm is easier to master, easier to accomplish, typically. It's easier for content to be seen on TikTok and they want it to be buzzed about. And it's also 30 second, 60 second spots of product. At least that's how it used to be. TikTok has allowed like more of a long form content, but like honestly, if you're gonna make long form content, just come on over to YouTube because YouTube is made for long form content. It's not made for short form. So Makeup Revolution kind of started the whole duping boom. People weren't really comfortable with it. And then all of a sudden everybody else started duping everybody else. And now it's kind of a free for all where every single brand is duping each other. And a uh, prime ex like I really feel like the Charlotte Tilbury puff debacle is like is a huge one to point out because there are a lot of brands that have tried duping that product because that product is so viral over on TikTok. So not only has Flower Beauty tried duping everything, like they have a blush one, they have a highlight one, and they have a contour one now that literally looks like the same packaging as Charlotte Tilbury. So Flower Beauty has it. Elf has it. I've seen Catrice come out with their own blush and highlight balms. They haven't actually done a, a bronzer balm yet. Like stick or wand balm. B-O-M-B. -B, balm. A bronzer balm. I haven't seen them come out with that puffy bronzy formulation yet. But I've seen Catrice come out with a highlight and a blush. Which that hasn't been released in the U.S. But if you go to Catrice's website you can actually see some of it. So I've seen Catrice do it. I have seen Physicians Formula is not really known for like liquid blushes and liquid highlights, but they are known for their butter bronzer. And they now have a butter bronzer in the same packaging as Charlotte Tilbury. So we have all of those brands. And those are, those are drugstore brands that aren't really known for like duping other brands. But then we have Tarte that has done the blush, the highlight, and the bronzer wands. And that brand is not really known for doing their you know, duping people, but they hopped on the bandwagon because that, that product is so viral because of TikTok that yeah. Elf deliberately has changed their business model to duping high-end product. And they've actually seen like a major influx of sales because they're duping high-end product and they're duping it really, really well. Like they're one of the few brands that's actually duping it really, really well. And don't get me wrong. I, I think some of these other brands that I did mention are probably duping it pretty well too. But there was a point in time in the beauty space when it was not okay to really like deliberately dupe another brand with like same packaging, same color, same everything. Like people just kind of looked, looked down upon it at one point in time. Like, and it was really a, it was like the discovery of the century. If you could find a makeup product not necessarily similar in in packaging but if you could find a makeup product that literally was a dupe for dupe match like in formula and in color and it wasn't intentional I should say like it wasn't like you know completely written in like neon letters like this is a dupe for whatever viral product this is it was like people actually had to do their research and they had to actually like you know 
they had to go into makeup land and, you know, find a really good dupe. It wasn't like written in neon lights at, at that time. And it wasn't intentional. Like it was like somebody had discovered that dupe and they wanted to make it known that like this really is a good dupe for it. It's a dupe that you wouldn't think of for it. And I feel like I really miss that that makeup space because people were doing a lot more like creators were doing a lot of investigating into like other beauty brands and really discovering other beauty brands. Whereas like now I feel like because we have such a dupe culture right now, like that's not really happening anymore. We don't have people who are really diving deep into these makeup releases and like taking a look and being like, okay, let's look and see what's already out there and, and, and either shop your stash, so to speak, or, you know, actually take a trip to the drugstore and See if there's something that is a similar color, a similar formula. It doesn't need to be in neon letters for it to be a dupe. And back before like the dupe boom of, I want to say 2020, I'm, I'm saying it's the dupe boom of 2020, but back before the dupe boom of like 2020 and beyond, I think we're going to put that in big bold letters, dupe boom of 2020 and beyond, back before the dupe boom of 2020 and beyond, like Finding a good dupe was few and far between because a lot of brands are hopping on board the viral makeup train, the viral dupe train, and they are duping and they're kind of, they're not being innovative with their makeup launches. Not all makeup brands are like this. Don't get me wrong. Like not, not all makeup brands are like this. Some makeup brands are very innovative. Some makeup brands are very original and honestly, when it, when I'm thinking about that statement about makeup brands being very innovative and very original, I think more of not mainstream makeup, but indie makeup. And indie makeup has definitely taken the cake with like innovative makeup launches about it. So and nowadays with certain things, like I said, they're literally taking same packaging, same concept, and they are duping it package for package, color for color. And it is, as a beauty consumer, and leave me a comment down below if you if you concur with this, what I'm about to say, but as a beauty consumer, it can be very overwhelming. Very overwhelming, but also if you're somebody who follows a lot of YouTube, who follows like the beauty space, maybe you're not necessarily a content creator, but you love following the makeup space, it can be overwhelming and underwhelming. And as a creator, I thrive. I used to thrive on those makeup dupe videos where you would click on it because you saw it was a dupe and it was like a product that you would not think was a dupe. Like, you know, the packaging was different. The entire look of it was different. And sometimes even the color would be a little bit different in pan. But then when it went on the face, it was a dupe for dupe match. The dupe boom of 2020 and beyond, if you really think about it, when brands start calling out other brands for duping them, what is going on? It's like drama in the beauty brand space, not just in like the beauty creator space. And I understand that dupe culture is a thing. I understand that dupes are going to continue to happen throughout like everything. Everybody is looking for the next viral product. Everybody's looking, every single, not everybody, I should say, every brand is looking for the next viral product to go, you know, blow up on the internet. They're looking for that next viral product. But there comes a point as a consumer, as somebody who loves the beauty space, where we are overwhelmed and underwhelmed at the same time because of this beauty boom. But instead of duping each other, why not come out with the next viral innovative product that is your own? Why not do that instead? Thank you. Thank you so much for staying tuned to the end of this video. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. I hope I get to see you in my next video. And don't forget to let's start a conversation in the comments down below about this topic or about any of my unfiltered opinions. Please like definitely go check out the unfiltered opinions playlist as well. Thank you guys. And I hope I get to see you again. Bye.